Right. Um, I think I've got 10 minute video clips on my phone at a time, so I'll try and be quick. Uh, this is the next part of my kind of Z1000 series, for want of a better phrase. Um, and this is uh, the engine. Um, but just to mix into this, one of the lads on the on the previous post said, why don't you lose your foot pegs? And I said that I do take passengers very rarely, but I do. Um, but one of the things that I bought a, a couple of months back was a HRC slave, um, sorry, master reservoir, which is essentially this tube. And I've just fitted it and taken my foot pegs off because obviously if you fit that, you don't need the reservoir then, and the reservoir bolts to the rear foot pegs. And I'd never seen one before, and I thought it was pretty nifty, so I thought, well, why not fit it? So I've lost the foot pegs. But I do um, actually rest my foot on the rear foot peg, believe it or not, the, because I'm a, a, a size 10 and a half UK, the ball of my foot fits on the front peg, and my heel used to fit on the rear of the peg, which is very comfortable. But for the sake of vanity, let's see what happens. Anyway, by the by, um, so this is about what's been done to the engine. So physically, the engine's completely stock. Um, it's got a full arrow system, single exit, 60 mil pipe. That's from an RSV4, shortened by 100 millimeters, and it makes a lovely noise, really nice. Um, I've had quite a few pipes on here, and that one is the one I would say is the best. It's a good mix of quiet to get it through an MOT here in the UK. But when you open it up, it kind of howls quite a bit, which is really good. So perfect. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so it's got um, a K&M filter in there. Um, not for anything performance-wise, because I don't think you get anything from having a, a K&M in there. But it's the fact that it's washable. So every now and again, when I service the bike or take the top or the tank off or something like that, I can wash the air filter out. Brilliant. Um, so. The main thing is, this has had an ECU flash, which lots of people have done. Um, this was done by CJS Racing, uh, and there were quite a few things that came in the ECU flash. So if you're thinking of getting an ECU flash, then A, make sure that you go to a, a dyno guy that can actually do all the extra bits and pieces, because a fuel mapping's not everything on these bikes. Probably the biggest thing um, is this is something that he was telling me while he was mapping it, because mine was mapped about whew, four years ago now. Um, and it went back in for a remap because I switched from a dual exit system to a single exit, which uh, once it actually went on the dyno with the single exit on, after having it mapped for a dual exit, the air fuel ratios were completely messed up. So having a pipe change, even though it's performance, does make a difference. Um, so this is, so first and foremost, it's got a fuel mapping on it. The air fuel mixture has been uh, corrected for the exhaust system. Um, the, the next big thing is the secondary, I hope I'm getting this right now, the secondary injector cutting time has been, uh, has been adjusted. Now stock, when you open up in first, second and third, the primary injectors are obviously the first things that open for you to get off the mark. And then as soon as they kind of run out of capacity to inject fuel, the secondary injectors then cut in. Now in first, second and third in stock, these cut in at 7,000 in first, second and third. And in fourth, fifth and sixth, they cut in at 3,000. So the dyno guy copied the mappings for the injectors from fourth, fifth and sixth to first, second and third. So the secondary injectors open sooner, uh, which gave it, from a real world point of view, a massive amount of shove in the bottom end, which was great. So that's the first thing. The other thing as well is, obviously because it's on a dyno, uh, it was still making power when it hit the red line. Uh, so we moved the red line up by 500 RPM because it was still making power, so why restrict it? So that was the other thing. Other things that were done were the uh, the O2 sensors were disconnected, so there are no O2 sensors on mine because, so Chris says, the dyno guy, if you fit the O2 sensors, they will try and readjust the mapping, messing it all up, so they've got to come out. So that's less wiring. Less wiring, less things on there, great. Um, the other thing that was disabled was the flapper valve motor, so that was completely unplugged and gone. Um, 
uh, and that's about it. So that's what's been done to the engine, which pff, real world just makes a thing 20 times more drivable um, from a top end point of view. Although I've only done, I've only actually, well, I say top ended, it probably had a little bit more. My clock reading showed 155 probably had maybe about five mile an hour more maybe which is not bad for a naked bike sort of thing so uh, so there you go so that's that's what's been done to the engine uh, and obviously as you can see there's a Sanco fuel hose kit on it as well uh, which my claim to fame is that is the first one ever that have been produced for this bike because when I got my bike this was quite new and Sanco didn't actually do a Sanco uh, hose kit so when I contacted them, they said to me, well, if you provide us with your hoses, we keep those as a reference, make you a set of hoses for free. Thank you very much. So there you go. There's my hoses. First ones available for any Z1000, because I think they've got their, all the other ones after mine have got a part number stamped on them, but mine haven't because they're the original prototype hoses. So there you go. Anyway, there's my engine. Cheers, lads. Bye.